Business Sidekick. Hello, dear listeners. Here's Justyna, live chat content writer. You're listening to the one and only Business Sidekick, a podcast dedicated to growing your online business. My today's guest is Mick Griffin, Chief Revenue Officer at Brand24, a social media monitoring and analyzing tool. Mick will tell you about when businesses should start to think about creating social media accounts, what are pros and cons of being present on social media, and what are examples of social media strategies. Enjoy! Business Sidekick! Hi Mick, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm great. Thanks for coming. Uh, can you quickly reveal what's your experience with, with social media? Yes, yeah, certainly. So right now, uh, I'm Chief Revenue Officer for Brand24. So uh, I, I look at social media more so from our client's point of view and, and how they can use it effectively. But my, my experience was uh, I, I started Facebook and Twitter profiles for my previous company, Get Response. Uh, six, seven years ago, uh, and I've kind of been attached to them ever since. Like they kind of sucked me in from the very beginning, and I've I've really liked working on on social media since then. Mm-hmm. Awesome! So you're the right person to respond to all my difficult questions. <laughs> I yeah. <hope> so. <laughs> so here comes the first one. Okay. Yeah. Let's say that I have a small startup. I'm a mm-hmm. solopreneur, and I don't hire any people. And I have my well-prospering website. I have my first customers, but I want to gain more of them. Is it a good moment for me to create social media channels? Okay, well, yes. And I think there's, there's a couple of sides to this question. Um, the first thing is it, you definitely have to open your, your mainstream social channels. So your Facebook and your Twitter and your, your Google Plus and, and, and possibly like a LinkedIn company profile. Um, and this isn't really at that point from a lead generation or from a marketing point of view, but this is purely from a, a trust building perspective. Um, I think that even the smallest businesses have to know now that their potential new customers are going to look online and see what they can find out about them first. So it's really good to show them that even if you've got a, a hundred followers or you've got 10 tweets on Twitter, it's really good to show them. They, they take this as a as a sign that you are in it for the long term, that they can they can trust you a little bit longer. So, on mainstream social media, I think that it's I think it's a necessity now. Yes. Mm-hmm. And how should I choose the right channel for my company? So, sure. it's a great question. I, I get we ask this question internally at Brand Twenty Four as well a lot. Is Absolutely. I, apart from, I would say, uh, Facebook and Twitter, which I feel now are completely mainstream mm-hmm. uh, and every business will have some kind of uh, client presence there. Actually, the, the, the good answer is, is that you should go wherever your clients tell you to go. So, for example, you, you need to do a little bit of research into your, your customers or your potential customers. If your potential customer is 16 to 21, you may really want to have a Pinterest, Instagram and Snapchat presence. If your potential customer is 45 and over, then of course you probably want to put more focus back into Facebook right now. So what I try to advise customers and what we do at Brand24, don't open every single channel. Try to really think about the channels that you want to invest your time in the most because that's where you're going to get the most return in terms of engagement and interaction. So not every channel is right for every business. Mm -hmm. And yeah, does it take much time to take care of brand account? It does. And I I think that that you you kind of have to have a little bit of a worst case scenario mentality. Um, If you do start a channel, you have to remember that you are then uh, you're then giving a responsibility to be there. So if you do start an Instagram channel you, and your customers start to post comments asking questions about your brand or what you're doing, you have to have a responsibility to react in a timely manner as well. So actually, it's it some some channels obviously can take a small amount of time. Uh, again, our mainstream channels such as Facebook and Twitter, we. We, we, we tend to put a lot of time into them in the beginning, building uh, a little bit of a strategy, a little bit of a, a plan, i.e. we would love to post three times a week or two times a week. So we put that structure in place. But then the day-to-day stuff becomes quite straightforward. It's it's not hugely time-consuming. More so is, is making sure that you engage people who talk to you in a human aspect, that, answer, that you answer questions. So... 
Yeah, it, it, from a, from an outbound point of view, I think it's very straightforward to manage social profiles, but you really have to be prepared to reply. So if your system suddenly goes offline or you, your product has problems with delivery, you have to be ready to answer everybody's questions. Okay, so maybe it's a good time to talk about pros and cons of having social media um, accounts. Let's start with pros. Why should a brand have social media account? Uh, one of my big things that I always talk about is that consumers are now in control. So the, the days of, of spending uh, big budgets on newspaper advertisements, radio and TV are, are, are limited. Uh, and this is because uh, your buyers, uh, whichever product that you're selling, your service you're selling, they now have control. You, you now have to go where they are. So the big positive of this is that you can go out and you can find them in their natural habitat almost. It's almost <laughs> like talking about going on safari. <laughs> um, in the past, the only option to market or try to target our audience was to, to guess, to spend money on a TV show that had good ratings at 8 p.m. And, and hoping that a certain demographic watched that type of TV show. Now with social media, we've got so much more data. We can be so much more targeted. We can give people even advertisements that they want to get. So Facebook, for example, or Twitter, they, we can really say, please give me 38 to 42 year olds that earn this amount of income, that live in this geographic location and that like this page. This is great because we can stop drowning consumers in in messaging and give it just to the people that really should want to have it. Yeah, that's but that's also a very important question, how to give them what they want. Because many companies are, you know, creating their business accounts and they have like 100 followers and uh, they post post with one like or two. And that's a, I, I think that's a huge problem that companies don't understand what kind of uh, content they, they should post, right? And, and yeah, and I think that the, the other problem that we've got in this respect is that uh, this buzzword of, of going viral yes, exactly. is, is now what everybody strives for. And what happens is, and, and I have a very basic technique, whenever I do anything on social media, either individually or, or, or representing Brand24, I still try to keep in mind that I'm posting it to one individual person. And my goal is to post it to our egg, our super targeted client and think that that would be valuable for them if I was sending it to them as a private message. Because a lot of companies start to make campaigns with thousands of people in their mind. And you dilute that value, in my opinion. When you try to make a message that is valuable for millions or thousands of people, you end up actually not making it valuable for anybody because you're really... You're, you're spreading your message really thin, hoping that it will have a bigger catchment area. So my, 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 my kind of advice for any social media uh, uh, campaign or any business with social media is really try to stay authentic and, and don't chase that viral, app, that viral situation because actually consumers, people like me and you, we have a really good radar for now for when companies are trying to trick us or trying to manipulate us. Mm -hmm. And the campaigns that actually, in my opinion, go most viral are the ones that seem most authentic. The, the, the campaigns that seem really honest and that they seem to be exactly how that company functions. You, you can't be a big oil company and try to do a funny comedy about oil because people don't find oil as a, as a, as a topic that is, that is comedic, let's say. It's and, not. <laughs> but that's, that's okay and they need to realize that as a brand. That, that is not our role down, road, down the road of being viral. Where, where a, an oil company might go viral is if they, they, they do a really strong campaign about how they're trying to uh, fund renewable energy or, or projects where they've actually had success in being cleaner environments and so on. So you, you've got to really understand your audience and, and not try to force it, not try to be something that you're not. Mm -hmm. And all that sounds really great, but what are the cons? What are the greatest social media traps or mistakes we can make? Sure. I think that, you know, first of all, I, I think that a lot of companies, even with the best laid plans, they a, a lot of brands fall down that, that trip of, of wanting to be viral. Um, and they lo even if they start very direct one-to-one -one type connection, they, they can lose track of their, uh, let's say, their core values. And they start to preach almost rather than communicate. That's kind of one. 
Um, but the second, the, the second one, obviously, is that you can be very. It can be very time consuming in the fact that the more successful you are, the more you will need to invest in social media. And a lot of businesses are afraid of that. But what they have to understand is that that actually comes with a pro at the end and, and that's a positive at the end because you, you actually end up with a larger audience and so on. One, one interesting thing about uh, social media that is a corner or that is a threat is that you become very vulnerable. You, you become vulnerable again in the opposite way that the consumers still have control. So they can post, they can tag you, they can, they can also make their brand experience with you very visible. So if a consumer has a bad experience with your, with your brand or your company, they can also make that very aware. They can post it on your pages, they can tag you, your, your existing customers can see that. And of course, that's, that's very, that's very uh, concerning for social media companies. Uh, in the past, uh, I always say about this, in the past, the worst thing that could happen was some word of mouth. That was when companies had control, but now consumers are very much in control. And even the smallest consumer spending the smallest amount of money with your company can have a very big voice and can have very big awareness. Yeah, that, that sounds like a quite big threat, you know. Uh, the Economist reported that 88% of people now check online before they make a purchase. So that means if somebody's walking down the street and they pass a restaurant and they think, oh, that looks nice, before they go in the door, they will pu pull out their smartphones. 80% of them will pull out their smartphones and they will Google that restaurant or they'll check that restaurant's Twitter or Facebook profile. So first of all, what we've got to be aware of now is that even if you have 10 mentions online, you have to be aware of what they are because even if you're not, your consumers will find them. Your potential customers will find them. And the other thing that we've really got to get over as an industry is that we shouldn't be afraid of our uh, negative uh, responses. So if a consumer or a customer or someone has a negative experience with your brand online, you don't be afraid of it anymore. In fact, it's even better to know those because this is how it looks. And I really use a good example of a company, uh, Ryanair, the, the airline here in Europe. Their social media policy up to around 12 months ago was to not respond to any kind of negative activity. They knew that they were a budget airline. They knew that they offered very cheap uh, solutions and they didn't have a huge competition in the market. So they, they just didn't want to spend the resources. And they had around 80% of all mentions of their brand was negative. Now, what happened was 12 months ago, they decided to start responding to these scenarios. And their, their, their process went from 80% negative to 50-50. So now all mentions of Ryanair, around 50% are positive, 50% are negative. How is that possible? Now, this, so what happened was the number of complaints didn't decrease. They didn't change their service. They didn't change their product. But this is how you have to remember it. Now, what happens now with consumers is they post online, Ryanair had an awful experience with you. What are you going to do about it? Now, 12 months ago, they wouldn't respond. So what would happen is that consumer would continue that conversation without them. So they would be like, oh my God, I can't believe you don't even respond to my tweet. And then the consumer's friend or the consumer's network would then engage and say, oh my God, John, this is awful. I'm also not going to use right now. So what happened was the same amount of bad experiences take place But because Ryanair weren't engaging and showing that they have a, they care at least, those can those those bad situations would condense and kind of snowball. And even now today, if you look at Ryanair and how they do social media, they're not simply solving every problem on social media. They're not offering refunds to everybody. They're literally just saying things like, "I'm sorry you had that experience." Here is the best channel to try to solve it. So they're literally stopping those conversations. They're literally stopping them from continuing. And literally consumers are at least happy that they've been acknowledged. That they're at least happy that they've been, uh, they were noticed. So they, they dramatically changed their online uh, opinion. I'm also less afraid of using Ryanair because I feel that if I have a problem, at least I can see, I can talk to them about it. Mm -hmm. That's a very good example of why uh, brand monitoring is so important, right? Okay, so uh, maybe the last question. 
Uh, can you give me an example of social media strategy that startup can can um, start with and how to measure it? What we have to think about as a small business or a startup or a medium business, we all want to build our own uh, our own audience on social media. So we want to go from 10 followers to 100 to 1000. And there is no better way than to do this organically. So you post content that you believe in that you create and the fact of the matter is that that slowly your 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 brand will will grow. There is not there are not too many ways to grow that that or to cheat it because consumers know what's going on. So I recommend that of course you you build that and you do it as as organically as you can but what what I try to explain to consumers and and customers and businesses all the time is this that there are also pre-existing uh, communities that are already out there. So, you know, I can use uh, I can use live chat as a, as a really good example. You know, uh, as a company, you're growing your social media network, you're getting more customers, more users, and more and more people are listening to what live chat say. But we also know that there is already on LinkedIn, on Facebook, there will be groups of literally hundreds or thousands of people who talk about live chat solutions or customer service solutions or customer engagement solutions all and they're already they're, they're neutral non product uh, no product owns those channels but that doesn't mean that you can't go into those pre-existing channels and add value so you can go into that uh, customer service uh, group on linkedin with a thousand customer service managers and say Hey everybody, really nice to meet you. And I'm just joining. I'm I'm from Live Chat or from Brand 24. I love the discussions. I'll try to add some value. And you you wait and then a, a conversation or a discussion starts that is about uh, I have a problem. Uh, I can't respond to my customers fast enough. Well, let me send you a case study about how our customers do that or how we do that. So you actually start to generate traffic and generate a following from a group of people that you at least already know are interested or could be interested in your 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 area of expertise and this works really well we do this we we practice what we preach we do this at brand 24 all the time we we're constantly trying to answer questions on quora we're trying to engage conversations on reddit but we're not hard selling we're only offering value knowing that the impression is enough for our brand so I recommend to every small and medium business that has a small budget or time constraints don't only wait don't kind of go out there and buy 100 likes on from eBay for your next post it's it's not going to be organic and it's not going to last go and find the communities that are already existing I I honestly say that there would be there will be communities about literally every single topic Um, and just go and put yourself in there try to be a thought leader try to generate value and people will appreciate you and they will come back to your you directly in in return so you just got to give before you get mhm awesome thank you very much for this interview really happy to help and um, yeah if if anyone's got any questions i i, I love doing this so i'll, I'll be happy to uh, to answer them as well let's sum it up Many people think that having a business social media account is nothing more than hanging on Facebook every day and posting funny pictures. I guess that those of you who thought that have changed their minds because it's a serious full-time job. But at the same time, social media give us an opportunity to find our potential customers in their natural habitat, make relationship with them, build trust and gain valuable leads. That's why if you've ever asked yourself if social media account is a must have for a business, the answer is one. It is. Business sidekick. That's all folks. Thanks a lot for listening. Don't forget that you can find this podcast not only on livechatting.com/podcast, but we're also present on iTunes, Stitcher and SoundCloud. Don't forget to rate this show if you've liked it or share it with your audience. All the best. It was your business sidekick speaking. This podcast was brought to you by Livechat.